Hey. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you all here on such a historical night because this is the very first episode of Late Nights in Chicago. You all could have literally been watching anything else right now, like March Madness Basketball, which is in full swing right now, which tells me everyone here's brackets are already busted. <laughs> Anyways, yes, Chicago finally has a late night talk show, which means we here are very excited to see what it's like to get a live studio audience in negative 50 degree wind chill in the middle of January. <laughs> Might be tough. <laughs> Uh, we're here live at the Studebaker Theater in the Fine Arts Building in downtown Chicago in front of a live studio audience who, by the way, I think some of them might have been picked off from the streets. Uh, a group over there got confused on their way in and thought this was the Oprah Winfrey show. Hate to tell it to you, it's not. Especially this group right here. Stop looking under your seats. We have nothing for you. This is not that show. Uh, another talk show host whose first name starts with the letter J has entered the late night scene. In New York, you have Jimmy. In Los Angeles, you have Jimmy. And in Chicago, you have, any guesses? Any guesses? Close, Jimmy. But, but not to confuse anyone, 24 years ago, had my name changed to Jeremiah so we could avoid that problem. <laughs> problem solved, right? I think so. Uh, the past few months, people have been calling me crazy in my late night endeavors as well, too, so crazy works, too. So, hi, I'm Jeremiah Crazy Paprocki. Crazy in the fact that I had a vision not once, but twice to start my own late night talk show. And tonight, in the best city in the world, I have the pleasure to bring to you a fully independent production with the help of some amazingly talented people. This could either be the greatest decision of my life, I'll have to look back at this moment from a cardboard box on Lower Wacker Drive. <laughs> so how does one of Chicago's sports announcers get into hosting a late night talk show, you may ask? Well, the inspiration kind of came in my early teen years when David Letterman, Conan O'Brien, and Jimmy Fallon were on TV at my home and I'd watch. Uh, but the real passion came when I actually attended a taping at Jimmy Kimmel Live. Uh, spring break 2019, I took a trip to L.A. and got tickets to be a part of the experience. Uh, I was a live, audio, audio, live studio audience member, and it was such a cool experience because being there, you get to see the behind the scenes of everything. You see the directors, cameramen, band, everybody getting ready, and then Jimmy, Fallon, uh, Jimmy Kimmel comes out. See, I can't even talk, and it's my first show. Isn't that something? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel came out. And then a bunch of celebrities came out, and you've seen them on TV, movies, stage, and then you're like, man, this is really cool. This is something I can do. Uh, and knowing me, because I'm crazy, my brain had a plan, and I got to work. I was like, all right, how can I do this? This is something I want to do. And so I was like, well, I'm a college student. This could work as a college show. And so I was attending the University of Illinois at Chicago, UIC. <laughs> go Flames. There you go. There you go. And uh, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I know a lot of talented people on campus. I can interview them. It's a win-win for everyone. And so I pitched a show called The Late Night Flame. And uh, thanks to the uh, Student Activity Board and Creative Digital Service teams, it was amazing that we got a yes and we made it happen. So, and I also like to shout out Joy Vergara for making that possible. Without her, that start for me wouldn't have been possible. So Joy, thank you. Also, yeah, let's clap it up for Joy. I'd like to shout out a couple other important members in all of this. First, my good friend, my brother since day one, Kayla Brookman, our drummer back there, the window seat band. <laughs> Me and Caleb have been spearheading operations for the past couple of years on this project, trying to make the show come together. He was also part of Late Night Flame as well at UIC. Uh, and then, Band leader Snowy Joey was the musical guest on our first episode. So, gentlemen, both of you, thank you. So we got to work fall 2019, and then we started production in January 2020. We were on pace to do one episode per month. We all know the year 2020 and how that ended up being. Uh, we did three episodes. Our last one was taped literally one week 
prior to the world shutting down from the pandemic. And although this was an abrupt ending and very unfortunate, I still learned a lot as a host. And now I'm not the type of person to let any setback, you know, stop me from doing what I want to do. Uh, since then, I've been very fortunate and blessed in my endeavors as a sports announcer, but my eagerness to get back to late night production was still prominent. And you can call me crazy all you want, but after months and months of hard work and planning, welcome to Late Nights in Chicago. Thank you, thank you. For those of you watching at home, thank you for tuning in to the first episode. Be sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe, because it's free. And subscribing goes a long way for all of us. Uh, but yeah, man, ah, man, I'm super excited to be here. I can't contain my excitement anymore. Please welcome special guest, former President Barack Obama. Wait, 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 everyone. Whoa, 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 what's going on? What's going on? What happened? You loved it. Well, former President Barack Obama is not here. No, you're lying. If I'm lying, I'm flying. Oh, my God. That's terrible news. It's okay. It's okay. Baby it's okay. steps. Next time. Yeah, next time. Next time. Next cool. Time. Cool, cool. By the way, I want to introduce you guys to some very talented musicians that I'm very fortunate to have as the official house band of Late Nights in Chicago. Give it up for the Window Seat Band. <laughs> Let's meet the members of the band, but wait. I'll let them tell it. Ladies and gentlemen, extraterrestrials and human creatures all alike, how we feeling tonight? <laughs> Can we introduce ourselves? Okay. Okay, welcome to this great flight. We're taking late night. If you're sluggish, leave your luggage back. His claims to waste right. The marshal is signal our departure with wave lights, but even the blast of your propeller was so fly a plane sight. You deserve the best of you, they say you give make room, so don't look now, but we're flying and finally leaving a vestibule. And it's plain how we wave high to more celestials. Always stayed in drive, but now we got a whole set of fuel. Can we get enough? You can hit an interest run, make some noise if you're ready to have a night that's so historic. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Heaven has got us taking and you know we'll keep it rocking. After two climbing, so what you hear your ears be popping. Enjoy the present light, uh, Christmas stockings. It's the late nights with Mr. Pep Rocky. Playing, ain't crew, review mirrors, wings, mints, move these four. Found enjoyment, even important. I'm taking off on keeping it cordial. This night's asking, where's the corner? This test is to take a higher whistle. I'm like two, like all of us, uh, increasing the latitude. Knew we'd be projected, but ain't know that this static was not added to this magnitude. It's a big sky, so the path of truth is limitless. Long as you pack the cumulus, clouds with your tennises, then guess what? You win this, you win, bro. Come enjoy this fly wherever, see this by the window. Okay, so if you don't know by now, we are Window C, and we call ourselves Window C for one reason. Um, you know, life can be a trip a lot of the times. So if it's gonna be a trip, you might as well enjoy the view, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but before we go any further, can we do some color response? Oh, for some color response, I am down for some color response. Yeah. Y'all don't sound like it. Y'all ready for some color response? <laughs> okay, follow me. Okay. Uh, uh, Everybody. 
Yes, yes, yes. Chicago! One more time for the window seat band. We have a great show for you tonight. Chicago historian Sherman Dilla Thomas is here. And we have music from Matt Mew. Stick around, we'll be right back. Yep, let's do it. <laughs> Fans follow Late Nights in Chicago on social media at the following channels. At Late Nights in Chi on X. At Late Nights in Chicago on TikTok, Instagram, and Threads. And search Late Nights in Chicago on Facebook to like our page. Following our show on social media will keep you up to date on all things regarding the show, such as future guest lists, purchasing tickets, show updates, and more. To watch full episodes and other content recorded for the show, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified when a video drops. Subscribing is free and shows us that you support our show. Subscribe now to Late Nights in Chicago with Jeremiah Paprocki. guest on Late Nights in Chicago, I mean our first guest ever, knows more about Chicago than Chicago knows about itself. 
Give it up for Sherman Dilla Thomas. What's up, man? Sherman, man, thank you for being on the show. The first ever guest on Late Nights in Chicago. How's it feel? Uh, really cool. Shout out Jeremy, man. Jeremiah. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, let, let's talk about the name Sherman Dilla Thomas. I know Dilla is a nickname. I know there's a producer, Jay Dilla. Did, yeah, yeah. Were you inspired by that, or does it have a whole different meaning? Whole different meaning. So, yeah, unless you're my wife and you're mad at me, don't call me Sherman. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Please, please call me Dilla. My mom gave me the nickname Dilla because she said I reminded her of one of the used car dealers on Western Avenue. <laughs> There's basically, a lot of car dealers on Western, yeah, so yeah, it makes sense. She, she was basically saying I could sell her anything, right? You know, you yeah. like, she tells you before you go in the store, I'm not buying you anything, don't ask. <laughs> and by the time you leave out, I got like a whole bag, right? So yeah. that's where the name came from. But she spelled it D-A-L-E-R. And then when Jay Dilla met Common, my friends okay. changed the spelling to yeah. D-I-L-L-A. Cool. Definitely. That's a cool story. Uh, you're from Chicago. Tell us about your uh, Chicago experience growing up. Oh, man. I'm uh, solidly Chicago, bro. Grew up in a bungalow <laughs> in the Arvin Gresham neighborhood. Yeah, shout out my bungalows. <laughs> uh, went to public schools. Grew up uh, near 81st and Troop Street, right? Okay. I've uh, had Mayor Daly's summer job. I was a lifeguard for about nice. 10 summers. Um, went to Eastern Illinois University, but okay. uh, my son of a Chicago police officer. My dad was a cop here for 32 years. Uh, so, I'm, so I'm super Chicago. Yeah. So, so when did all the, the facts about Chicago come about? When did you start learning? Were you good in history class growing up? Yeah, I was, I was, I was pretty decent in school in general, right? When, when your dad's a cop, you, you better be okay in school. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, if he gives you a whooping and then you call the police, it's just going to be his boys that pull up. So <laughs> there's no point in that. I, I kind of just oh, figured out I better. safe at home. Yeah, no, no, it's not safe at all. <laughs> um, but the Chicago story, so it, it comes from a sad place, right? Uh, we have this thing, 290 Expressway, right? The Eisenhower. Yeah. And my dad's side of the family uh, came up the Great Migration. They settled on the west side of Chicago. My grandpa bought a house on what was then Congress Parkway. And then they built the expressway, and he got displaced. And uh -huh. so because of that, my dad's side of the family hated expressways. And so we took the streets everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you take the streets from 81st Street all the way to uh, the United Center or the Chicago the, uh, Stadium, then you're like driving up Ashland for 80 blocks. Yeah, and, that's, <laughs> right? that's tough. And the languages would change though, right? So, you know, you roll it through Inglewood, you, you see, you know, English and black owned stores, and then you hit about 24th Street, and now you're seeing uh, Asian American run businesses. So I'd be like, yo, what, what, did we leave Chicago? What happened? So he'd teach me right about Chinatown, then you go a little bit further up, and now you're in Pilsen. So then I started seeing Spanish, and I'm like, yo, yeah. what's going on, <laughs> right? And so, like, that's how I learned the city in the backseat of my dad's car. Yeah, Chicago's so diverse. Um, and then was there, when did you learn more history about it? Because you, when I see your TikToks, you're giving like a full history lesson. Like when I was watching it first, I was like, man, this could be my like history teacher. <laughs> so I know you had to have some like extensive studying into it. Is but it's, 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 my, it's my pastime, right? So yeah. I, I haven't so it's ever... it's just a passion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I never, like, you know, majored in Chicago history or even taken a Chicago history course anywhere before. Okay. Uh, but if it had Chicago in its title, I would read the book. Um, yeah. And then just, like, I, I've learned most of my Chicago history being a Chicagoan, right? I was a meter reader for Com Ed, so I'm in everybody's oh, backyard. okay, yeah. And so oh, you're all over the city. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And so, like, when you're in people's backyard, the old lady pops her head out the door like, hey, what the hell are you doing? And then, <laughs> then y'all start talking, and then you start learning, right? So yeah. I, I learned a lot about Chicago just in Chicago. Yeah, definitely. Around. And I'm a Chicagoan, too, so I totally get it. It's so diverse. You get to learn so many different cultures when you go around. So that's a, a true story for yeah, sure. Uh, but TikTok. Where did that come about? How'd you get onto TikTok? Yeah, like, that, now that's, that's something that I didn't see happening. That's for sure, right? Um, my, my combination of my wife and my daughter, um, I used to tell Chicago history stories on Facebook, but I would like type it out. And then, you know, okay. ain't nobody gonna read no long <laughs> ass status, right? They're like, as soon as you gotta click see more, they're like, oh, I'm out, yeah, right? That's it. <laughs> so I'm scrolling. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so then when TikTok became a thing, I was trying to figure out how to like keep my daughter from twerking on TikTok, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I was like, maybe if, if I uh, help control the kind of content she watched, right? Mm -hmm. So I started making videos with her. My wife was like, you should put that Chicago history on TikTok. Yeah. And I did. The rest has been crazy, man. It's yeah. been like absolutely insane. No, it's been a ride. Thank you. Over 110 million followers on TikTok. Well, not that many. 1.4 million <laughs> likes yeah. on TikTok. Is this what you ever imagined of all of this coming about? It's, 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 no, I, I really, uh, if I would have saw it coming out of like bet and then like made some money on the side <laughs> off of it, right? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I remember when I started, I told my wife, like, if I could just get, like, a thousand views a video, I'd be real satisfied with putting in the effort and then getting a thousand people to watch the videos. Mm -hmm. And so, like, to now, you know, I did a, a, a video at, at, of the Leo Boys Choir just singing, and it got, like, 700,000 views, right? Like, nice. Just, like, it's nuts. Um, the opportunities, right? But what I recognize is that, yeah, maybe people are watching the dude with the immaculate Jordans and the really nice hats, <laughs> right? Uh, but more so, we're just all proud Chicagoans and we're eager to learn more yeah. about the city. So. And it's a great city and there's so much more to learn. I mean, I'm a Chicagoan and sometimes listening to your stories, I learn more about the city than I ever knew. Right. Do people come up to you and say, hey, uh, all you're the that time. guy on TikTok. I learned something from you. You know, all the time. It's, it, it's weird, right? Because I'll be somewhere and then you'll start feeling like somebody looking at you. And then they'll, like, tap somebody and be like, so then I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm finna fight. <laughs> but you know, then they'll come and say, oh, man, I appreciate what." That's probably, like, the best compliment you can give me, right? Oh, Other than, yeah. like, uh, complimenting my family, but saying that I taught you something about Chicago, I made you feel proud about Chicago, really, like, lights my day up. Yeah. And, I, and I hear it a lot, man. I'm, I'm very humbled by it. I was at the Bulls game, just minding my business, eating nachos, stuff in my face, <laughs> and then they, like, pan the camera. Chicago historian Dilla in the house. I'm yeah. like, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You got to be careful. Now. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but you've learned a lot about the city. You've taken advantage of your experience and your knowledge on the city. And now you're actually capitalizing off of the uh, TikToks. You have a bus tour now. Yeah, yeah. I hope to see you all on my tour, uh, Chicago Mahogany. You can uh, check out a ticket, get a ticket at chicagomahogany.com. Uh, we'll pick you up downtown. We're not doing downtown tours. Get somebody else to do it. <laughs> Uh, but I will do. It's too congested. Anyway. Yeah, not just that, right? I really feel like Chicago is more than Chicago Avenue to Roosevelt, the lake to Orleans, right? Like, that's, that's not even a fraction of what Chicago offers. We do Bronzeville, we do Roseland, we do Uptown, we do Argyle Street, we do Chinatown, we do Pilsen. Uh, we do the southeast side. We do North Lawndale, right? You get really into the city. Yeah, what very much What makes Chicago, so. Chicago, the neighborhoods. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, it's, it's a mixture of everything, right? So, yeah, there's some, you know, this architect did this thing kind of thing, too. But it's also, you know, why is K-Town K-Town, right? Why do the streets over there start with K's exactly, in that kind yeah. of order, right? Why We talk about the avenues. We talk about how neighborhoods were formerly villages, right? Uh, we talk about some sad stuff that comes from Chicago too, but uh, it's, it's really, really designed to have you proud to either be visiting or to be from Chicago. Exactly, there's a lot to be proud about Chicago. And uh, you have a, a, a hoodie on yes, sir. that has a pretty cool quote on it. It says, everything dope from, uh, that comes from America comes from Chicago. It's, it's an absolute fact, right? If you think about it, anything that you like, if you're a video game head, you play Mortal Kombat, that was invented in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. If you like brownies, and that includes weed brownies, <laughs> then uh, chocolate brownies were invented in Chicago, right? Yeah. Even if you find yourself in New York and you take the train, the third rail is gonna be electrified. Yeah. Chicago oh. premiered electrifying oh, the nice. third rail. You know, okay. if you go to a skyscraper, you like somebody's downtown, right? We invented the skyscraper. Yeah, all the way down to like if it's hopefully not, but if one of your family members needs an open heart surgery, the first one ever uh, was done in Chicago. Chicago invents the blood yeah. banks, right? The NASCAR is coming. The first ever American car race happened in Chicago. Yeah. We invent the American League. We invent the National League. George Hallis invents NFL. Like, I'll be here all day. Chicago don't <laughs> sell. No. <laughs> We want to touch more on that. What are, just keep going, keep going. Keep telling us things about Chicago <laughs> we don't know about. You know, it's true, right? So Chicago invents gospel music, Mahalia Jackson and Thomas Dorsey. 
Chicago invents rock and roll because if you like the Rolling Stones or if you like the Beatles, I'll ask you what's a Rolling Stone. And the Rolling Stone is the cover of a Muddy Waters song, right? That's that's where they got their name. That's where their first hit records come okay. from. Sister Rosetta Tharp is the godmother of rock and roll. Chuck Berry recorded all those songs here at Chess Records, right? So that's gospel music. We give jazz its name. It was a Chicago Tribune writer who changed ragtime and Dixie to jazz, right? Uh, Chicago is the place that premiered the blood bank. So if you ever need a blood transfusion, the readily available source of blood was right here invented in Chicago. Uh, let's see, Chicago, what else? I'm forgetting a few. Of course, you got to mention Italian beef. And if your beef <laughs> isn't dipped, then I'm judging you, right? <laughs> Chicago invents the uh, Italian beef. Chicago, in very large part, invents the NAACP. The first ever gay rights organization in the history of our country. It was called the Human Rights Organization, invented by Henry Gruber. Uh, his house is in uh, Lincoln Park. You can go check it out right now. Started in Chicago, man. Yeah, man, I'm so intrigued. I'm, like, <laughs> lear I'm learning a lot in the moment here, too, so that's super cool. Uh, important question, uh, since you were talking about Italian beef, uh, do you put ketchup on your hot dog? Oh, man. Um, no, I do <laughs> not put ketchup on my hot dog. And in my house, once you turn 13, you're not allowed to put ketchup on your hot dog either. <laughs> right? We'll let the kids do it, you know. I got seven kids. Mind your business. Don't be, don't be <laughs> oohing and on. You know, it was hard work having those seven kids. <laughs> um, so, yeah, once you turn 13, yeah, no one in the house gets to put ketchup on their hot dogs anymore. Perfect. Uh, how do you feel about deep dish pizza? You know, um, if I got to have it, I'm going to probably, wait, you're going to probably want sponsors, so we won't say okay, any, any okay. names. Okay, Thank you. Thank we you won't for say looking any, out for me We won't say here. any yeah. names. Shout out <laughs> all the deep dish pizza places. Uh, for me, I'm an Italian fiesta, thin crust, cut in squares kind of okay. guy. If I'm going to be eating that's pizza. Fair, that's fair. Yeah, but, Definitely. you know, I rock with uh, uh, deep dish pizza, right? And, you know, cool thing about deep dish pizza we can't figure out who invented it. Really? We, yeah, so we know it came from uh, Uno's. We know it came out of Pizzerino Uno's. Okay. Uh, the guy that owned the place was Ike Sidwell. And so he claims he invented deep dish pizza, but Lou Malnati was the chef, right? Oh. And then the lady who invented Gino's East was the waitress. Ooh. <laughs> right? And then <laughs> and another, branched out and and then another guy thing. who invented Giordano's also was like the sous chef. So they all were there. So we can't, we can't say who did it because <laughs> it, we, we know it came out of Uno's. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I know Chicago sometimes get a, gets a bad rap from yeah. people that aren't in Chicago, you know, people in New York, Los Angeles. Uh, what's, what do you think is the biggest misconception about Chicago? Uh, that as soon as you land at O'Hara Airport, <laughs> once you get on the train, you're going to get carjacked off the train and shot. <laughs> 37 times, and then when your grandma comes to ID you, she's going to get shot 37 <laughs> times, That's right? Insane. And it's, 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 it's not that at all. Now, yeah. do we have crime? Do we have issues? Absolutely. Is there things that we should do and that can be done to kind of bring that crime down? Absolutely. Uh, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and you F around, you probably will find out, right? Yeah. Um, f but... On the flip side of that, by and large, this is the example I give, and I don't mean to uh, demean or diminish anybody who finds themselves a victim of gunshot violence or gun, yeah, any of that, right? Of course. But if I owe you $2.7 million, right? I owe you $2.7 million, and I say, hey, bro, I'm going to keep $50. Do you care? No. Not at all, right? Yeah. And so on the worst weekend in Chicago, 50 people might get shot. On the absolute worst weekend, I hope none of them get shot. Yeah, but on course. the other hand, 2.6 something million of us are going to go to work, take care of our kids, jump in an Uber, go to the Chicago Jazz Showcase. We're going to come check out Late Nights in Chicago yeah, with JP. you know it. You know it. And we're going to make it home safe. My wife is going to say, did you Uber because you better not have been drinking and driving? And I'm going to say, smart, yes, ma'am. Smart, smart. <laughs> right? And, and, and the rest of us are going to go on to contribute to society. And I don't understand how we are always focused on the 50 and never on the 2.6 million. Right? I don't get that. So yeah. I try to focus on the 2.6 million. Is there any big plans to keep 
hyping up Chicago. The, I know you got oh, the yeah. bus. Oh, yeah. So is there the, bigger than the bus? Yeah, there, there is. I'm, uh, um, dang, I shouldn't say, but I am because I don't <laughs> got no cooth. Uh, so this is an exclusive. Oh, yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah for exclusive. sure. All right, um, let's hear it. So one, I'm working with the good folks at uh, WTTW to kind of create some programming nice. about Chicago yeah. history to put on PBS stations. Um, me and uh, Thomas Lennon created a show that we're getting ready to. Oh. We got really, really close to selling it, and then the writer's oh. strike happened, right? Ah, so uh, Thomas Lennon is the guy, uh, main guy from Reno 911, uh, Lieutenant oh. Dangle, New Boots Goofing, right? Uh, he also wrote Night at the Museum. People are kind of asleep on that. Oh, he wrote, yeah, he's like the guy that wrote Night at the Museum. So he and I created a, a scripted Chicago history show, mostly based in fact, but you know, if you wanted to put it on TV, somebody got to shoot a bazooka or something like that, so it'll, <laughs> it'll make it on TV, right? So we're in the process of putting that on a major streamer, and we're going through uh, the motions. Those type of shows like take a little bit of time. Um, but there's so, so many amazing things. I'm humbled every single day when the Obama Presidential Library opens. They're gonna, you'll be able to like buy a ticket to them and take my tour when you get off of oh, it when they get man, out of there, that's right? Huge. Um, that's awesome. But if nothing else, big thank you, thank you. Well, you got a lot of big stuff coming up, and we're I'm, all super excited yeah, to see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But if sure. nothing else happens, right? I, 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 and I, I, not to be preachy, but we all should like really appreciate what we have. I uh, got a kick-ass wife, some healthy kids. I got a pit bull, a cat. I got way more George than I can wear. And so <laughs> if nothing else happens, right, life is awesome, and I appreciate that. And if I don't exactly, do anything yeah. else but give neighborhood tours and promote my city, I'm going to think that that's the greatest thing on earth, and I'm going to die a happy man. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's just the way to look at it, right? Yeah. The outlook in life. Yeah. Um, before we go here, uh, in your own words, Dilla, um, what, why is Chicago the best city in the world to you? Um, one, I consider us like America's baby, right? There was a New York before there was a America. There was a New Orleans before there was America. But Chicago comes on the scene after the Revolutionary War. And when you're the baby, the first, and you can be innovative and you can try things and you can see if it works. And so that's one of the reasons that makes Chicago like really, really great, right? Coming out of the fire because we had like a blank slate. You could try new things. You could see if you could build a story, a building eight stories tall. And so that's one of the things that makes Chicago awesome, man. We have everything that a big city has, but we also have that small town feel, right? I wouldn't say that Chicagoans are nice, but we're kind. And there's a difference. <laughs> Because nice will say, oh, you look nice and you like your style and walk by you. Yeah. Kind will cuss you out <laughs> while changing your tire. You didn't see that pothole? What the hell is wrong with you? Give me yeah. that wrench. But I'm helping you, right? Yeah. And so we're, 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 we're a kind place. We're an innovative place. We're a place that has something for everybody. If you're into the arts, if you're into theater, if you're into music, if you uh, want to be a hip hop artist, if you want to be a blues singer, if you want to be an actress, right? We got Broadway, we got Steppenwolf. We got so many things that allows you to be amazing. We're a union town. You can get a kick-ass union job mm -hmm. and take care of your family. Uh, we were a place that values family. Even in uh, our differences, we recognize that we're better united. Uh, of course, we got some amazing sports teams. We got all the sports that you can need, right? Every particular profession. Yeah, we invented yeah. the Special Olympics, right? How can you not be proud to be from a place that created something that allows folks to be seen and be exactly. included? And awesome stuff, man. So I think just those are some of the things. We got the, the most amazing educational institutions in the city, right? You're an alum of UIC. Just look at the amount of uh, amazing doctors and lawyers and, and business folks that come yeah. from UIC. This just is true. Just yeah. alone, right? We got University of Chicago. We got Northwestern. There's, there's so many things to be proud of to be from Chicago. So uh, when you put it all up in a bag and you shake it up, you get the best American city. Yeah, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Right. Sherman, before we go, you can learn more about Chicago with Sherman Dilla Thomas on his Chicago Mahogany bus tour. Visit chicagomahogany.com to book a tour and learn more. And also to watch Dilla's videos on Chicago history on TikTok and other social media channels. Follow him at sixfigure underscore Dilla. Six-figure Dilla, that's yes, me. Yes, sir. Sherman. <laughs>
You're the very first guest. Ah. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. You're now much more a part of Chicago history. Thank you so much. Chicago Sherman Dilla Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, we'll sit with Matt Muse. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Chicago, when there's nothing to do and you need a place to be, come see your favorite celebrities and never miss a beat. Learn more at LateNightsInChicago.com. Welcome back to Late Nights in Chicago. Our next guest is a prominent hip-hop artist in the city of Chicago. Please welcome Matt Muse. Oh, my boy. Thank you for being here, man. Welcome, welcome nice to the couch. show. How's Thank it going? You. Uh, I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm great, man. This is, this is an amazing experience. Yeah. This is the first show, man. First show. Thank you. I thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Matt, man, tell us about your name. I know Matt's not your actual name, the government name. Yeah. Uh, it's your performance name. So where did Matt Muse come from? Um, you want the cute version or like the real, the, the real story? You want to give us both? I'll give you both. All um, right. The cute version, right? So it's like my last name is Matthews. So that's okay. where Matt comes from, you know what I'm saying? Then it was like, I want to be inspirational. And so I was like, Muse, the thing that makes you want to do the things that you want to do. Like that's okay. where the Muse came from, <laughs> right? Uh, the real story. So in like 20, 2012 ish, I was like, I want to take this rap stuff seriously. Let me make a, a special email for my music, you know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. Um, but I didn't have the rap name Matt Muse yet. Um, I had another rap name that we're not going to talk about. Um, okay. And when I was making the email, me and my friends are like, what should the email be? And I was like, okay, well, you're, you're first, y'all finna learn what my first name is. My first name is Dexter, so okay. Dex. Uh, last name is Matthews, Matt. And then what, what Muse, like music, Muse. And then my friend oh. was like, what's the email? When I said Dex, Matt, Muse, for him to write it down, we were all like, oh my God, Matt Muse. And <laughs> so there you go, <laughs> there you go, perfect. Oh, yeah. So shout out to the email for shout making that possible. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, another Chicago kid. Yeah. Grew up, born and raised in the city of Chicago. Yeah. Please tell us about your Chicago experience growing up. I am from the south side of Chicago. Um, where the south side at? Yeah. Um, from the south side, I grew up on 81st and Kenwood, so the Chatham, Avalon Park okay. area. Um, my experience in Chicago was just super south side. Like, I was just always on the south side. Um, I went to Shoe Smith Elementary School, which is in Hyde Park. I went to Morgan Park High School. Um, okay. Morgan yeah, Park, yeah. Oh, um, and yeah, like I was raised by Christian parents, so like the church was just like very prominent um, for me. But it was like church friends majority of the time, but then school friends, school time, and like that. That yeah. tr like I didn't get rides to school, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I would take the the 79th Street bus to the red line, red line to the 111, 111 to Morgan Park. So there was a lot of red line and. Fun bus a, stories a, and a fun CT, train stories. True yeah. Chicago experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. the CTA. So, if you've been on the CTA, you know, you know what's up. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it was, yeah. For sure. Uh, so tell us, man, how'd you get into music? Where did the passion for music come from? Yeah, um, both of my parents are musical human beings. My mother, she's been in every choir imaginable since I was young. Um, and she sings opera still. She's still in like nice. a bunch of choirs. So um, it runs in the family. It runs in the family. Yeah. And my pops, he's a, he's a rapper, but he's also a house musician. So like oh, he was writing okay. and producing house music um, all throughout our upbringing. He actually wrote one of the songs that was sampled for Kanye's song Fade. Um, oh. So my father, his name is in the credits of in that song. Credits. So that's Big, pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah. And so like I think coming from a musical family, music was literally on play all the time, whether it was while my parents were working, whether it was my mom singing while she was baking, like music was everywhere. We were forced to be in the choir when we were younger. So like I just always been a musical person. And then I think seeing my pops do the music for real made me want to do it. And yeah. then I was like, I don't want to work a nine to five. Like, <laughs> I want to I wanna rap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to do a job that doesn't feel like a job. And I knew that making music and being an artist wouldn't at all ever feel like work, yeah. and it never does. So, so you were in a choir, yeah. so you yeah. got good vocals? How's that like? <laughs> 
I can sing a very little bit. When I really put my mind and my heart to it, I can't. If you hear my records, I'll be singing on them all the time. Like, yeah. I like my voice. How y'all might feel is different, but I, yeah. I like my voice. That's good. That's yeah, good. I yeah. like my voice, too. Okay, cool. That's yes, all that matters. Of course. Yeah. You make, a, yeah. make, make a joyful noise. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You want to give Chicago a little taste? Or I'm going to sing in the... In the <laughs> yeah, we'll save it. <laughs> we'll save, give me a little later. We'll save yeah, it yeah, for yeah. the performance, for sure. Yeah. Uh, while I was prepping for the show, I, I came across something really interesting. Yeah. Uh, you actually have a, a TED Talk. I do. A TED Talk X at uh, your alma mater, yeah. NIU, Logo, uh, and I learned something very interesting. Uh, music actually saved your life. Yeah. Please yeah. touch on that, yeah. So I have a TED Talk, which is so crazy <laughs> to say. Um, I haven't watched it in years. Um, so whenever people bring it up, I'm like a little nervous, like, oh man, like, I was so young when I did that. But yeah, the, the story that I, that I the, the name of my TED Talk is Hip Hop Heaven, and it's the story of how hip hop saved my life, and the specific story um, that I go into detail in there was there was just a really tumultuous time that I was going through my second year of college. Um, and there, you know, I, I wanted, there was just this moment where there were like suicidal thoughts, you know what I'm saying? And oh, they man. weren't, they weren't, it wasn't like, it was just like, I don't want to be here no more. You know what I'm saying? Like the struggle and the stress and, and, you know, it just was overwhelming me. And there's this day where I was just like, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I think I'm kind of done for today. And I walked in the house and I had two roommates um, and we always had people in our house, and I was in a bad mood, so I was irritated. <laughs> I was irritated. I was like, why are these people in my house? But I had a friend named Ashley, and Ashley knew that Jay-Z is my favorite rapper. Um, mm -hmm. And she's like, yo, Jay-Z and Kanye have this new song. It's called Click. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the song Click. Um, but the day that Click dropped, um, I walked in the house, and they were like, no, like, you got to play it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let, let, let us play it for you really quick before you go upstairs. They played it, and I know that he, he is not in a good place right now to the public. Yeah. Um, but Kanye is one of my musical inspirations. Um, mm -hmm. And when this song came out, I was very excited. You know, this is over 10 years ago. I was very excited to hear his yeah. verse. And his verse on the song is last. And there's a, a lyric in there where he says, uh, I went through deep depression when my mom passed. Suicide, what kind of talk is that? And it was just so weird that that lyric played, you know what I'm saying, thinking about deep depression specifically because I was in the midst of a deep depression. Yeah. Um, and then to kind of like be like, nah, like don't, don't go down that path. It almost felt like the song was speaking to me. And I was like, I'm gonna take this as a sign that I maybe don't need to go upstairs and like, let me just kick it with y'all. And like, I'll yeah. figure this life thing out. And I'm still here, so. Oh, um, that's I'm amazing. Really well, we're really happy grateful. you're here for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. For uh, so. I know that was, uh, you know, might've brought the mood down, but it's no, an important story to it's talk real. about, it's you real. know. It's you know, real. Real. Um, so, uh, you talked about it, Kanye being a, a great hip hop influence, yeah. uh, Jay-Z as well. Do you yeah. have any more hip hop influences? Oh, yeah. Anyone from Chicago specifically? Yeah, I got my Mount Rushmore together. Um, <laughs> Common is, you know, I give Common big credit. Another yeah, Chicago yeah, yeah. rapper, exactly. yeah. And like, Common is from where like I'm from, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, him okay, and Kanye yeah. grew up in the same area of Chicago that I did. So like, the first time I heard my streets in music was like, Memories on Corners, with the folks in the Moe's, watching the store for the rose, talking, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, grew up right off Stony and Cottage Grove. And like, we literally lived off Stony right and Cottage there, Grove. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, Common, oh. you the man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Common is on there. Lil Wayne is a huge, huge, huge influence for me. Um, Outcast is another big influence. Um, and you know, a curveball for y'all, I love Future. Like, Future is definitely on my Mount Rushmore. Um, Jay-Z, obviously. Future's great, yeah. yeah. I love Future. And then Aaliyah. I love Aaliyah. So okay, I put there you all go. All of them on my, like, you know, music yeah. Mount Rushmore. A lot of inspirations yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I listen to your music, and I know that you're, you're, you're good at lyricism. Yeah. Your, your music means something. How significant is lyricism in hip-hop? Yeah. And how has it kind of, you know, been used or misused in hip-hop today? Yeah, I, I think I grew up in, like, if the 90s was, like, the golden era, you know, I grew up like golden era B, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I really think the early 2000s and the, the, like going into the 2010s was just a crazy time for music. And if you were around and listening at that time, the run that Lil Wayne had, you know what I'm saying? From the mixtapes to the Carter Three was just the crazy, y'all can make some noise if y'all, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Um, you know, to see, to see a person like uh, Jay-Z, you know, I went to the Jay-Z exhibit in Brooklyn in October. Oh, nice. um, at the Brooklyn Library. That was the most inspirational thing I've ever, probably ever done, like, for my art. You know, Jay-Z tried everything. He is the quintessential, like, hip-hop entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying? Um, and both of them are phenomenal lyricists, and they yes, both have definitely. had the biggest impact on my lyricism. I think I learned my punchlines from Wayne, and I learned, like, my, like, entendres, and, like, you got to listen to this ten times before you get this line from Jay-Z. 
Um, and so I think I grew up on that. Where we are now, every genre evolves, in my mm -hmm. opinion. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't, I, I'm never the type of person, like, even those arguments about, like, oh, the guys from the 90s could never hoop with these guys today. Like, I don't believe that. I think that's, yeah. a, that's, that's not true. But I think there's value in the way folks hoop now and the way they did in the 90s. And, like, if lyricism is not the same way it was delivered when I was coming up, it doesn't mean that these folks are not lyrical and the things that they're yeah. saying is not important. And so for me, it's very important. Um, I still listen to the big lyricists now, Kendrick, you know, yeah. J. Cole, Drake, you know what I'm saying? I'm laughing because of what's happening right now with these guys. <laughs> yeah. um, if you know, you know. It's um, a, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I think that I know so many artists just here who really care about their lyrics but also make good music with great lyrics that I still think hip hop is in a good place lyrically and I'm just excited to see where it's going to continue to go. And I still care about lyrics and I still try to say really cool stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, now you're a, a prominent hip hop artist in your own city. Isn't that cool? What is that like, man? Man, it's like... It's cool. Like, it's really cool. Like, I remember the first time I was, like, on the news, you know what I'm saying, yeah. a few years ago. And, like, I went to the gas station, like, the next day. And this guy was like, yo, were you on the news? I was like, yeah. He was like, you were so good. And so I think, like, not, not only is that cool, but the community here is so close-knit and so, like, the camaraderie is great. And so when you, when you do something as an artist here and as a rapper, um, you throw an event or something like that, the people pull up for you. And I'm so grateful for my community that I've built through my art, and that's I think that's, that's sure. what makes me prominent, is that I have friends and people who just care about what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? And so we throw a listening party for my latest project in September, and it was nice, like 200 yeah. RSVPs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's good, and yeah. so, you know, we do the show we're going to talk about, like, and my people pull up and they show love. And so I think any artist from here will tell you, because the industry doesn't have, like, an office here. There's no label with an office in Chicago. So we really all we got until you branch out and go somewhere else. Yeah. And that we all we got. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know there was no labels here. No, there are none. I mean, there are indie labels, but like the big ones, like, you know, UMG, uh, Interscope, they don't have yeah. offices in Chicago. It's a flyover city, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that camaraderie has to exist, and we make the most of it by showing love to one another, and I'm happy to be a part exactly. of it. And I wouldn't want to be a rapper from nowhere else. Like, yeah. I oh, love no. Chicago. Chicago's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. We got to yeah. change that, man. Chicago's all about change. I'm trying to start. Yeah, we got to get know, something. Launch yeah. the, the launching pad for a talk show yeah. here. We got to get some labels get into label Chicago. In yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Now, um, speaking about being a part of the Chicago community yeah. scene, uh, yeah. have you worked with any Chicago artists? I mean, there's a lot of Chicago yeah. artists that come year in, year out. Have you been able to work with anyone yet? song with Joseph Chilliams, that's one of my favorite people and artists. Part of Pivot Game, shout out Pivot Game. Um, West Side, Chicago, native on the mix. Make some noise for the mic. Make some noise oh, for yeah. the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you never know what's going to happen here. So. Right. Um, yeah, like I, I have a song with Joseph Chilliams. Shout out to Pivot Gang. Shout out to the West Side. I heard some people scream for the West Side. Shout out to the West Side. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of working closely with Jamila Woods when I worked for your okay, Chicago yeah. office. Um, and Jamila is a really good friend of mine and a phenomenal artist from Chicago. Um, I was, you know, my homie Femdot, uh, another nice, guy that nice. I'm super close with. Um, and I was a part of, like, we did these cool things during the pandemic. Um, it was like me, Femdot, The Mind. Um, Ooh, I don't nice. know if y'all know The Mind. He's amazing. Um, from Philly, but we, he's one of our yeah. own. Uh, shout out Chicago still. Um, the folks from Pivot Gang, and, like, we were doing these, like, it was called the 16th Chapel, where... To keep our pens sharp, we were getting on like Zoom every day with each other and like rapping to beats. So basically, the producers would make a beat in 16 minutes, and then we would write a verse in 16 minutes, and then oh, you would just cool. deliver whatever you did in that yeah. moment, and and that was cool. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Definitely. So working with them on that and being invited to be a part of that was really cool as well. So and I'm still growing and meeting people and working with people, yeah. you know. And then you know my new project has some Chicago features. Shout out to Knight. Um, if y'all know tonight, she's a young, amazing singer, um, and more artists from Chicago I'm working with, too. You mentioned yeah. Jamila Woods. I know yeah. this is a random question, but were you in the LSD video, Lakeshore Drive? <laughs> Lakeshore Drive. I was in the LSD video. The, the blue, uh, I had blue on the blue. Oh, so you, you saw go. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had on the blue, the blue <laughs> champion. Champion, like, like they sponsored the video or something. Nice. Uh, but I was in that video. I actually, I'm also in one of her new videos. Okay. Um, which song is it? I don't remember the name of the song, but I'm in one of her new videos. You might see me. Okay. Uh, but I'm pretty much like a Chicago video vixen, if you want me to be real with you. Okay. I'm in like, I think I've gotta, got like 10 Chicago music videos that I'm in, you know what I'm saying? So I'm pretty keep much. an eye out for you. Yeah, I'm going to put there, it on my right? LinkedIn or something like that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Any Chicago artists that you're still waiting to work with? Mm, artists that I want to work with. I want to make a song with Jamila, for sure. Yeah. Um, that's going to happen. Uh, let me see. I really want to do a song with Common. I think, like, because Common is so instrumental, right, yeah. because he's so instrumental to 
my love for hip hop, but also has anybody seen Common live like recently? Anybody? Anyone out there? Yeah, we so got a Common, couple people. Yeah, yeah, Common Common does this thing where at every set he does, he freestyles. And I'm not talking about like getting up there and spitting a written. He'll like get on stage and like point to somebody in the crowd and just start like riffing off that and rap for like five minutes straight. Common is a real life MC. Not scripted. And yeah, not, not scripted at all. He's a real life MC. I think he has like the heart of hip hop within his music still. And so I think to work with a legend like that who really understands like hip hop and how I came up on hip hop would be really cool. So I would say him as well. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Um, any great like hometown show? I know like going out there, performing yeah. in front of a hometown crowd, any yeah. like good hometown shows? I got a couple. Yeah, so Common's gonna keep coming up. Shout out to Common. Uh, <laughs> Common, <laughs> Common through this festival. Common called, Chicago, man. Right, yeah, called iFest. He did it in 2014 and 2016. And the 2016 one, I think J. Cole was the headliner. Okay, um, nice. But I had an opportunity to perform at that one. So uh, Donda's House, which is a nonprofit that was started by Kanye um, in the name of his mother, uh, I was a part of that. And they had an arts program. And they did this, like, citywide competition where whoever won the competition got a chance to perform, to have a real performance slot at the iFest. And me and my band won that slot. It was really cool. Nice. And then we got a chance to perform there. And so not only was performing there cool, but seeing that show, like SZA performed there, like long before she was as big as she is now. And like, she's the exact same person, like been just as talented since then. You know what I'm saying? That show was great. And then through my community initiative called Love and Happiness, we throw a show every year called the Long Hair Don't Care Show. Yeah. Um, I heard some claps and some stuff. You yeah, can do that. Clap it yeah. up. Uh, we could do that. So yeah, the Long Hair Don't Care show, I perform at it, so that's cool. But yeah, yeah. I'm also a fan of the artists who we get to perform. And so we of just course, did our yeah. fourth one. Raven Lene was the headliner. Joseph Chilliams performed. Jay Bambi performed. DJ Cash Era was our DJ. Um, Naira was our host. And I'm just in awe of what the team that I work with and myself have been able to do with that show. So that's a show that I'm just like, I hope we keep building and growing. We had like 850 people there at Talia Hall this year. Or this past year, it was just, it's amazing. So yeah. that's one that I want to shout out to. Shout out to Long Hair Don't Care Show. And Love, yeah. Love and Nappiness is actually uh, a tape of yours. Yeah, yeah. So I released an EP called Love and Nappiness in 2019. Um, we did a, we did a listening, not a listening. We did a, my first headlining show was the release show for that project at Shuba's. Shout out Shuba's. That's another Chicago yeah. staple. Well, um, actually, the, the window seat band has performed at Shuba's. Oh, shout out. Hey, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. What up, window seat? I need one of them hats, man. I need, <laughs> I need the, the captain, the captain joint, um, the pilot joint. Um, we sold that joint out. Um, and the love and happiness time was just like when I felt, I was like, oh, I'm really doing this. You know what I'm saying? And so that is one of my EPs. It's mm -hmm. about. Uh, each song is about a different type of love. Like in the parentheses, it's like the Greek word, Greek word for that type of love. It's like six songs. Check it out. I think it's amazing. I hope y'all do too. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's love and happiness. Yeah. And yeah. Then the latest project you dropped last September yeah. was uh, so far so decent. So far so decent. What was the creative direction behind that? So so far so decent. So if you're from Chicago, decent means something different here than mm -hmm. elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, decent might to other folks mean like okay or so regular. So. Something but here like in Chicago, decent means incredible, amazing, the bee's knees, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like whatever you want to call Chicago it. Chicago lingo. Yeah, Chicago lingo. And so I've been working on an album called Matt Black for the last few years. Um, and it's not ready yet. Okay. But this project were a few songs that I had made for that album that I wanted to give the people early. So that oh, they would nice. know that so Fancy. far, yeah, yeah. So, so far the album is sounding so decent. And so that's where So Far So Decent comes from. It's just five songs that I really, really like yeah. with people who I really, really like. There's no special meaning beyond that. The songs are just really, really good. And yeah. so that is, that's So Far So Decent. So you kind of told yeah. us you're working on something right now. What's, yeah. what's next for uh, Matt Mewis? So we're going to keep things going with Love and Happiness and the Long Hair Don't Care show. Uh, Love and Happiness is a community initiative I started after the name of the album. Um, we do a winter drive every winter uh, where we collect hair care, skin care, and personal hygiene products and donate them to South and West Side shelters. Um, we just finished our sixth year with that. So this year will be our, our, our fifth. So this year will be our sixth drive and our fifth show. So we're going to keep that going. Um, and then I'm working on... I guess it's the first time I'm saying this. We're going to deluxe So Far So Decent. So we're going to drop a deluxe oh, for it with three new songs um, in the next few months. I'm performing one of those new songs tonight, actually. Um, and then the goal is to just put out, y'all can clap, yeah, yeah. Uh, New music coming through. <laughs> right. And the goal, the goal right now is to just really lock in and be consistent. So I want to drop singles throughout the year, and then hopefully we get Matt Black to y'all in 2025. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, Chicago, or anyone watching for that fact, you can stream Matt's music. 
on all streaming platforms and follow him on social media at MattMuse12. Matt, Neat. thank you for being here. You want to perform some music? Uh, yeah, definitely. definitely. I'm, I'm ready, ready for it. All right, yeah. let's do it. When we come back, we'll have music from Matt Muse. Hey, if you'd like to see guests like Drake, Bad Bunny, Tom Holland, and Ice Spice and more, be sure to subscribe to our channel and tell everyone you know about Late Nights in Chicago. All right, welcome back to Late Nights in Chicago. Here to perform Let It Out and Hold Me Down, give it up for Matt Muse. yourself y'all look beautiful y'all sound beautiful y'all showing love this next song is an unreleased new one it's called down um it's about holding your people down when they need it can y'all say yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so when i point at y'all y'all say that down 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 y'all yeah, yeah. got it down 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 yeah, yeah. quicker yeah yeah. yeah yeah down 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 Y'all got it, let's go. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Y'all got it. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Down, I know where I'm down. down, I know where I've been. Down, yeah. I've been down and now they won't be there again. Down, my homies always down, down so I'ma let the hand down. Call yeah. me down. Hold me down. I know where I'm going, I know where I was. Down. I was going through it rough, but now I had enough. Down. My eyes watch the past, so I'm probably numb. 
Look, tell you where I'm going, tell you where I've been. You can try to feel yeah, it, but yeah. you'll never really understand. Trying to climb over poverty lines, my dudes focused on the grind. Yeah, yeah. So the dark never shine. Let that boy blow a pack. Let that boy spin a jack. Let that boy spin some cash. Yeah, yeah. Let that black boy beef. All of this progression, like I got it written on me. Light years ahead of who yeah, yeah. is written the beef. Out here of the world, this is what's to see. Us and diamonds in the pearls, yeah, yeah. will I tight? That be curls. You deserve to spend that money without fear. It's gonna burn. You ain't never in a spiral. Yeah, yeah. You ain't never in a twirl. When I'm here to hold you down like a real one. Ben Locks is chill yeah, yeah. to beat back to millions. So if you blow it in the money is tight, I'ma hold you down till yeah, you back yeah. right. That's on sight. Like down, I know where I'm down. I know where I've been. Down, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me hear you say yeah, yeah. down. Hey, homie. Where y'all at? Hobie. What your sale is? What's your cash at? If you need something, I'ma pass that. What your sale is? What's your cash at? If you need that, then I had that. Hey, what your sale is? What's your cash at? If you need something, I'ma pass that. What your sale is? What's your cash at? If you need that, need to hear y'all. Sick. Down, I know where I'm down, down, where you where at? I've been down, yeah, I've been yeah. down, I've been 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 down, I've been